Hello students. Um, today we are going to learn about the next kingdom, kingdom Plantia. In the previous classes, we already learned about three kingdoms and their classification. That is kingdom Monera, kingdom Protista and kingdom Mycota. Today we will be learning about kingdom Plantia and kingdom Animalia. So, kingdom Plantia. Metaphyta. Everybody knows what, what it includes. It includes various kinds of plants. All the plants come under kingdom Plantea. Okay. So everybody knows about some of the features of the plant. So here we will be studying some of the characteristic features. So plants are multicellular eukaryotes. So they are eukaryotic. Multicellular eukaryotic with tissue and organ grade of organization. Plant consists of tissues and tissues develop into different organs like parenchyma, colenchyma, sclerenchyma, xylem, phloem. These all are some of the organs of plant which we will be studying in the coming chapters. So plants are multicellular eukaryotic with tissue and organ grade of organization okay then mainly plants are autotrophs that means plants can prepare their own food in the presence of sunlight okay they undergo a process called as photosynthesis where they can prepare their own food. So plants are the producers of the earth. So they are called autotrophs. Okay. They will be having a photosynthetic pigment called as chlorophyll. And because of this chlorophyll, plants get plants obtain green color pigment. Okay. Then they have a cell wall. And that cell wall is made up of cellulose. Cell wall is composed of cellulose. Plants are non-motile. That means the plants cannot move from one place to another. Plants are non-motile. Andre, undu jagadinda indu undu kadege hoglikke agudilla. They doesn't have any movement. But have a root system, they generally have a root system and this root system is mainly used to absorb water and minerals from the soil. Okay, they have a root system, Berugaruntu, which is used for the absorbment of water from the soil, water and different type of minerals from the soil. Coming to reproduction, they reproduce sexually. That is, they have sexual method of reproduction, formation of gametes. Okay, then some of the plants show alternation of generation. Some plants show alternation of generation, which involves two generations. That is gametophytic and sporophytic, which involves two generations, namely gametophytic and sporophytic. What is gametophytic and sporophytic? I'll teach you in the coming chapter. Okay, they show two types of generation. There is change in generation, alternation in generation. That is gametophytic and sporophytic. Okay. Then they store reserve food material. Our body only on the food material store after the egg and our body only now glucose store marte way. Same way in the plant body they will store some food material and that is called as starch. They store starch has reserve food material. Gonchinir and tala ha get the they store starch has reserve food material. This is about kingdom. Plantea. Okay. Different types of plant. I will be explaining in the coming chapter. Plant kingdom. 
Next is kingdom Animalia, called as Metazoa, kingdom Animalia. Again, they are multicellular eukaryotes with tissue and organ grade of organization. Example is all different type of animals come under this kingdom. So they will be having tissues and organs. Okay, tissues will develop into organs. Then, more, all, most of the animals are heterotrophs. All the animals are heterotrophs. That means they cannot prepare their own food. Okay, they might be saprophytic or parasitic. Animals cannot prepare their own food. They depend on other organism or other plants for their food. So either they might be saprophytic, they feed on dead materials or parasitic. That means they may live on other organism or depend on other organism for their food. Okay. They live on other organism or depend on other organism for the absorbment of food. Parasitic. Kingdom Animalia, that is animals lack a cell wall. They do not have a cell wall. The body doesn't have a cell wall. They show locomotion. That means animals can move from one place to and they show they show locomotion. They uh, show locomotion, store food in the form of glycogen or fat. Plant is starched, ganjinir Whereas in uh, animals, they store food in the form of glycogen or fat. Glycogen means it is a form of glucose and form energy storage. It is a form of glucose and form energy that is called as glycogen or fat in the form of fat. Okay. Reproduction is sexually that is by the formation of gametes, male gamete and female gamete. This is about kingdom animalia, multicellular eukaryotes, heterotrophs like a cell wall, show locomotion, store food in the form of glycogen or fat and Method of repression is sexual method. Okay, these, these are the five different kingdoms and their characteristic feature. Okay. Next coming to the last part of the chapter that is viruses. Everybody know what are viruses. Now it is the famous one is coronavirus. So, we will be studying about viruses, generally about viruses. Okay. So, what do you mean by viruses? Viruses means venom or a po poisonous fluid. Venom or poisonous. Vishakaryam shaguru. Poisonous fluid which was first discovered by Pasteur D. J. Iwonski. It was first discovered by Pasteur D. Z. D. J. Iwonski. They were, it was first found, they were first found in mosaic disease of tobacco. It was first found in a tobacco plant where the tobacco plant was suffering from a mosaic disease. Mosaic disease of tobacco. Okay. So, and the scientist called as M. W. Bejering took the extract of the infected plants of tobacco and saw infection in healthy plants. Okay? It, 
it a one scientist called has badger ink what did he do uh, he took the extract of the infected plants he saw a tobacco plant infected with mosaic disease mosaic means there will be some lesions in that particular leaves mosaic disease okay a tobacco infect ad ad nodi adrinda sulpa infected infected plant in the other fluid and extract and no take do and then no study mark then okay he saw a disease of tobacco plant suffering from mosaic disease so what did he do he took small extract of that plant a small part or small fluid of that particular infected plant and did research on it and he saw infection in healthy plants too okay what happened he took the extract of the infected plants of tobacco plant and saw infection in healthy sari idda plant alli kuda ee infection ittu so after doing research upon that infected plant he obtained the fluid coil has contagium vivum fluidum okay he did research upon the infected plant of tobacco that is mosaic disease of tobacco and he saw same infection in the healthy plants of tobacco so when he was doing the research he obtained a fluid he obtained a fluid from the infected plant and he named that fluid as contagium vivum fluid contagium vivum fluid contagium vivum fluid means infectious living fluid okay so the viruses was first found in mosaic disease of tobacco okay m w bejering did research upon that extract of the infected plants he found these infections in tobacco healthy tobacco plants okay and he found a fluid infectious fluid in that particular plant and name them contagium vivum fluidum meaning is infectious living fluid later w m stanley in the year 1935 showed that viruses could be crystallized and crystals consist largely of proteins okay he said that viruses could be crystallized crystallized means you might have seen sugar sakkare nortiri they are in the form of crystals so crystallized and crystals these crystal viruses contain largely of proteins one of the property of viruses is they are inert outside they are non living outside the body and as soon as they enter inside the body they become living sariyagi helikagudilla whether living or non living somewhat between living and non living in middle of that okay but as soon as it enters the body of the host it will become living okay so when it is outside the body of host we can store viruses in the form of crystals so we say they are non living outside the body as soon as virus enters inside the body they become living they are obligate parasites they are parasites inside the body of the host slowly they multiply inside the body of the host and cause infection in the body some are dangerous you everybody might have suffered from common cold or flu so these all are because of viruses they are not truly living but as soon as they enter the body of the host they become living cells outside the body they will be having an inert crystalline structure so that we can store this uh, viruses Uh, in the form of crystalline structure okay so they are mainly poisonous fluid first found in mosaic disease of 
tobacco and in tobacco in infected tobacco plants we found a fluid called as contagium vivum fluidum that is infectious living fluid coming to the properties of viruses virus is a nuclear protein i said it is a crystallized structure uh, crystals consisting largely of proteins so it is a nuclear protein and mainly the genetic material of viruses infectious that is either dna or rna of viruses infectious okay virus is a nuclear protein and their genetic material the genetic material can replicate has shown has virus enter inside our body it will multiply it will release its genetic material inside our body okay and that genetic material replicate they form copies of themselves replicate and they form copies like your photocopy xerox copies of themselves and they are infect infectious to our body understood their genetic material is infection either dna or rna as soon as they release dna or rna inside our body they replicate andre adu ondiddandu jaasti aagutade and that replicate causes infection in our body that will lead to infection in our body so the genetic material of viruses infectious okay viruses infect both plants animals as well as human beings so viruses which infect plants they have single stranded rna i said there are two types of genetic material dna and rna dna are usually double stranded that means they will be having double coil like structure whereas viruses which infect plants they will be having single stranded rna rna with some one say one strand that will cause infection in the plant that means rna will be released inside the body of the plants and cause infection in the plant body but viruses that infect animals they can be of either single stranded or double stranded rna or dna okay viruses which infect animals that viruses might release either single stranded or double stranded rna or double stranded dna genetic material and these material will replicate inside the body of animals and cause infection particular infection in the body okay one more virus is there is there that is called as bacteriophage that is a virus which infect bacteria okay they are called as bacterial virus one more virus is there bacterial virus bacteriophage virus that infect bacteria they are double stranded dna virus which infect bacteria such bacterial viruses are called as bacteriophage see this is the diagram of bacteriophage two marks diagram you have to draw it in your notes book bacteriophage is a virus which infect bacteria the genetic material is double stranded dna okay this is the picture of bacteriophage it will it will be having a polyhedral head a collar a sheet and five ty- five tail fibers five stringing tail fibers this is the structure of bacteriophage diagram of bacteriophage these are viruses which infect the bacteria diagram is important okay coming to the structure of virus viruses will be having a simple structure they have a protein coat called as capsid viruses will be having a protein cover a protein cover called as capsid made up of small subunits called as capsomeres okay viruses will be having a protein coat called as capsid made up of small subunits called as capsomeres these capsomere protect the nucleic acid nucleic acid is nothing but genetic material 
okay protein they have a protein coat called as capsid and that capsid is consists of small subunits are made up of small subunits called as capsomeres which will protect the nucleic acid okay capsomeres are arranged in helical or polyhedral geometric form they are arranged in helical structure or polyhedral this is the polyhedral structure they are arranged in helical or polyhedral geometric form polyhedral structure Hel helical or strand like structures so structure of protein it is made up of protein coat called as capsid sorry structure of viruses it is made up of protein coat called as capsid capsid is made up of small subunits called as capsomere inside that the genetic material dna or rna is present so the structure of capsomeres are either helical or polyhedral geometric form so this is the polyhedral structure of virus so this is the diagram of bacteriophage bacteriophages are viruses which infect the bacteria so called as bacterial viruses next is okay before that viruses cause disease in both plants and animals viruses cause disease in both plants and animals you know nowadays all the humans are suffering from coronavirus one type of virus okay so mainly the disease caused in humans are mumps mumps and the kepati roga helteve mumps smallpox smallpox is usually eradicated now and that is the present present ill smallpox mumps keppate andre kenne dappa agudu keppade kelidiri herbs herbs virus sarpa suttu ant helteve kannadalli herbs herpes herpes virus sarpa suttu then influenza common cold or flu influenza is common flu and also aids in humans aids is a familiar uh, disease everybody know it is caused because of hiv viruses human immunodeficiency viruses okay in plants the symptoms are mosaic formation andre elegalalli uh, lesions irutade mosaic formation kappu kappu lesions irutade and leaf rolling leaf curl roll agirutade round agirutade andre curl agirutade uh, leaf curling ro rolling round agirutade yellowing leaf yellow agudu young leaves become yellow in color illadre dry agu yellow aagutade illi young leaves hosa baruva leaves yellow color aagutade yellowing and vein clearing adaralli leaves alli vein irutade madhyadalli ribs veins alla irutade adu irudilla and dwarfing dwarfing andre a plant eshtu height ge belibeku ashtu height ge beludilla sannade agirutade dwarf anta heltave dwarf sannadu you you might have seen some humans they have grown in their age but not grown in height okay they are called as dwarf like that these plants should grow to a particular height but because of infection of viruses they will not grow further that is called as dwarfing okay these are some of the diseases caused in caused by viruses in plants and animals okay next is viroids okay viroids this is a form a new infectious agent which was discovered by t o diner okay this is a new infectious agent which was discovered by t o diner in the year 1971 okay these viroids are smaller than viruses okay a, a new infectious agent which has which are much smaller than viruses viruses only uh, they are very they are tiny they are microscopic but viroids are again much smaller than viruses 
and cause a disease called as potato spindle tuber disease. They cause a disease, they cause an infection in potato called as potato spindle tuber disease. And this disease in the plant is because of the release of genetic material free RNA. This is found to be a free RNA. Okay. The speciality of viruses is it doesn't have a protein coat which is found in viruses. Okay. I said uh, viruses are covered by a protein coat called as capsid. But that protein coat is absent in viroids. So they are smaller than viruses and their molecular weight, the RNA, the free RNA of the viroid will be having low molecular weight. So they are very smaller than viruses. It is an infectious agent which will cause potato spindle tuber disease. The genetic material release is RNA but the difference is it doesn't have a protein co coat that is capsid which is present in viruses and it will be having a low molecular weight so it is smaller than viruses this is about viroid okay last one is lichens you might have seen lichens see this is one of the picture of lichens wood the today plant the plant body earlier today this is Lichens, you might have seen if you have plants, you can find this. Lichens, okay. So, lichens are symbiotic associations that is mutually useful between algae and fungi. A very interesting part of lichens, they are very helpful lichens they have symbiotic association that means they are common friends of algae and fungi you can say that they are mutual friends of algae and fungi that means algae cannot live without uh, fungi the fungi cannot live without algae like that they are symbiotic association that is mutually between algae and fungi the algal component is called as phycobiont and the fungal component is called as mycobiont which are autotrophic and heterotrophic respectively. Okay. So, lichens form symbiotic association. That is between algae and fungi. So these are important landmark question. The algal component is called as phycobiont. The fungal component is called as mycobiont. Important one mark question. Algal component in lichen is called as phycobiont. Algae is called as phycobiont. The fungal component is called as mycobiont. See, what is symbiotic association? The algae are autotrophic. And the fungal are heterotrophic, fungi. Okay. The algae component that is phycobiont is autotrophic. That means they can prepare their own food. And fungal component are heterotrophic. They depend on algae for their food. So I said lichens provide symbiotic association. That is common friends of algae and fungi. How? See, algae prepare their own food. And it will share the food to fungi okay in turn the fungi provide shelter and absorb mineral nutrients and water from from the algae ibbaru obbarana bittu innobara vadiklike agudilla yakandre ibbarinda kuda upakara untu nodi algae can prepare their own food whereas fungi are heterotrophic they cannot prepare their own food so what will happen Algae will prepare food and share a little part of food, give some food to the fungi. Okay. In turn, how fungi will help? Fungi will provide shelter and absorb nutrients from the soil to the plant. 
ओके फंगाई विल प्रोवाइड शेल्टर टू अलगे अंडरस्टूड सिम्बायोटिक एसोसिएशन में दे के नॉट लिव विदाउट ईच अदर अलगे विल प्रिपेयर फूड एंड सप्लाई टू फंगाई एंड इन टर्न फंगाई विल प्रोवाइड शेल्टर टू अलगे so they share a symbiotic association and absorb mineral nutrients and water from its partner fungi provide shelter to algae and absorb mineral nutrients and water for its partner understood they share a symbiotic association the algal component of lichens is called as phycobion the fungal component is mycobion they are mutual friends they share a mutual relationship that means algae are autotrophic and fungi are heterotrophic algae can prepare their own food so it will prepare food and share some part of the food for fungi and what fungi will how fungi will help algae it will provide shelter adakke algae annu shelter kodutade andre manigage shelter provide maartade absorb mineral nutrients and water from the soil and share to the algae this is a mutual relationship algae prepare food and it will give some amount of food to fungi because fungi are heterotrophs they cannot prepare their own food so sulpa aahara vanna adu fungi ge kodutade so how fungi will help it will provide shelter andre algae anadarolage irlike bidutade shelter and provide mineral nutrients and water to the algae okay lichens are good the pollution indicators that means lichens do not grow in polluted areas elli pollution untu alli lichens beliyudilla they are good the pollution indicators okay lichens have symbiotic association that means they are friends of algae and fungi mutually associated between algae and fungi the fungal component of lichens is called as mycobion the algal com- component of lichen is called as phycobion algae prepare the food and share it to fungi in turn fungi will provide shelter to algae so they are good pollution indicators that means lichens do not grow in polluted areas I hope you understood. Thank you.